Well, we're in the last hour and God is opening our eyes to know the truth. And the truth will make us free. No longer be slaves to Satan. No more slaves to sin. Amen? He whom the Son of Man make, shall make free shall be free indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. We're being made free. And uh, I want to talk to you about the serpent's bite. That sin is the serpent's bite. And I want to talk to you about the cure to the bite. It's an incurable poison that the serpent, when he bites the human race, the whole human race became incurable. But Jesus Christ is the cure. Amen. Sin is the disease that brings death. But Jesus Christ is the cure. <clears throat> You've read many times, I'm sure, Genesis chapter 3, uh, where Adam and Eve was in the garden and, uh, and the serpent was there in the garden as well. And many of us have thought that Satan was speaking through the serpent. That the serpent was uh, an animal of, of sorts. Some kind of a reptile or an animal. Well, I want to help you to see here is that this was not an animal or some kind of reptile talking to Eve. This was Satan himself. Come out, come out wherever you are, devil. It's time to expose that liar for what he really is. Now the serpent, or Satan, was more subtle than any beast of the field. How many know in these last days that the false prophet, the Antichrist, are called beasts? And how many know that uh, the scripture says that those in these last days that are going to follow the beast and worship the beast are called brute beasts? Are you listening? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. This is not a reptile speaking to Eve. This is not an animal speaking to Eve. This is the devil himself, the serpent that we read about in the book of Revelation. This is the serpent, because in the book of Revelation, this says that Satan, the devil, that old serpent from the garden. Are you listening? This is Satan, folks. This is Satan that was talking to Eve. This is the devil. Are you listening? And the woman said unto the serpent, so Eve's having a conversation with Satan, having a conversation with the devil. We may eat of every true tr fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the devil said unto the woman, you shall not uh, surely die. Are you listening? He's already poisoned her. He's already stuck his fangs in her. You shall not surely die. How do we know that she has already stuck, he's already stuck his fang into Eve because of the next things that take place, because of the decision she makes to disobey God. We know he's already stuck his fangs into her. Amen. And so, what happens? The direct result of the poison of the serpent is disobedience to the word of God. Is disobedience to God. And so here we see Eve disobeying what God said to do. And not only that, but the serpent's bite not only has an effect on her, but now it's having an effect on her husband. 
have an effect on Adam. But it didn't just have an effect on Adam and Eve. The whole human race became poisoned by the bite of the devil. What's the bite of Satan? His words. It's when he spoke to Eve. That's how he sticks his fangs into, into you. Well, we go into the book of Revelation and the Bible says that the serpent is casting a flood out of his mouth. Are you listening? This serpent is Satan. I asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, is the serpent in the garden um, the devil or, or did the devil use this serpent to speak through? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, one in the same. One in the same. In other words, this is the devil, but he is masquerading as a serpent. Any wonder today that those that are involved in Satanism and things that are very dark, that they love having serpents and they worship serpents. They got serpents around their necks. And not only that, but those that are involved in yoga today, they call it serpent energy. Why? Because they're of the father of the devil. They are literally serpents, just like Jesus called the Pharisees. He said, you are serpents. Why are they serpents? Because they've been born of the seed of the serpent. Just because you're infected with the bite of the serpent doesn't mean that you've been born of the serpent. But there are people on this earth that have been born of the corruptible seed of the serpent. Are you listening? They're not just poisoned by Satan. They don't just have, they're not just a sinner, but they have gone into Satanism. They have gone into worshiping the devil, their father. So you've got people on the earth right now that have been bit by Satan, been bit by the serpent, and they have sin in their life. They're sinners, and they need to be cured of that sin. And those are what Jesus considered to be the meek. But then you have those that gone beyond being bit by the serpent that literally become born of the serpent, born of the corruptible seed of the serpent. And those are those on the earth that are evil and wicked and don't love people, don't care about people. All he care about is himself. And they're furthering Satan's beast kingdom. Are you listening? So God says, I'm going to put enmity between the woman's seed and the serpent's seed. Are you listening? The whole human race has been bit, been poisoned by the devil by Satan, by the serpent. But the whole human race has not been born of the serpent to where you can call every sinner on the earth a child of the devil. No, Jesus only addressed the Pharisees as children of the devil. These were the ones on the earth that considered themselves to be the holiest of all. They considered themselves to be divine. They consider themselves to be above everybody else. They consider themselves to be above the law. They consider... You understand where I'm going with this, don't you? These are the ones that were born, born of the corruptible seed of the serpent. Not just bit. I was bit by the serpent. But Jesus is curing me. He's, he's taking out the poison. Amen? He's removing the poison of the serpent in my life, which is what? The lie of Satan that makes us slaves to Satan, makes us slaves to sin. You ever heard the lie of the devil that tells you you can't ever get free? You'll always be like this. That one that lies to you and tells you, okay, go ahead and do it. Next time you won't do it. It's okay. You can go ahead and overeat this time. Just don't do it next time. He knows every time you obey his voice that it makes it stronger, the bondage. He knows that the stronghold becomes stronger every time you listen to his voice. That's why he deceives you, because you're making a stronger covenant with the devil every single time you listen to him. So what do you got to do? You got to break covenant with him. Stop listening to him. Stop listening to his lies. 
Well, how do you know you're hearing from Satan? Anything that's contrary to the Bible is the devil. Anything contrary to the scripture, to God's holiness, to God's word, to God's righteousness, to the truth of God's word is of the devil. That's how you know you're hearing from Satan. Anything that causes you to take your eyes off Jesus, you're hearing from Satan. Anything that gets you to question the word of God, that's Satan. Hath God said? How many today of churches today uh, are being turned into synagogues of Satan? Where you go into these churches, they're supposed to be Christian churches, and I've been in some of them where literally, while I was listening to the minister, I found myself questioning God's word. Should I be questioning God's word if I'm listening to a true minister of God? No. What happens under the ministry of a true minister of God does not cause you to question God's word. It causes you to have more confidence in God's word. Amen? That's what happens when you're listening to a true minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He he will cause you to have more confidence in the word of God. He'll never cause you to question God's word. If you're listening to a minister of the devil that transforms himself into a minister of righteousness... You know because he's constantly causing you to question the word of God. If you're questioning God's word under a minister, you want to get away from there. You want to run from that minister because that is not a true minister of Jesus Christ. They transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, but Jesus calls them serpents. They are children of the devil. Are you listening? Folks, Have you been born again of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God? Are you still a seed of the woman? Or is it worse? Have you been born of that corruptible seed of Satan and become so corrupt to the core that you're actually taking on the nature of the beast? Just because you're not saved and you're a sinner doesn't mean you have the nature of the beast. You may have a fallen nature. You may have a carnal nature. But to have the nature of the beast to be a serpent, like Jesus called the Pharisees, they literally gave themselves over to the devil people. Children of the devil. Does that mean that the Pharisees couldn't be saved? Well, we see how hard it was to get them saved because look at Nicodemus. That's God Almighty speaking to Nicodemus and there's no record that he ever got saved that he was ever born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So when you get steeped into the depths of Satan, when you go into that area to where, like give you a good example. I'll give you a really good example. Look at Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is on his way to being born of Satan if he already hasn't been. Already born of Satan. Justin Bieber, a child of the devil, not just a sinner. Not just a sinner wanting to be a Christian, no. Even his girlfriend, that he is the one he used to have there, I forgot her name now, but she is also on her way, if not already been born of Satan, born of the serpent. Both of them are involved in yoga. They're both born, uh, been, look, when you're involved in yoga, in the depths of yoga, in the serpent spirit, and the serpent energy, that is being born of the devil. He is the seething energy. He is the serpent energy. Are you listening, people? I say these things to help you, not to offend you. Even though they probably do offend you, I'm not trying to offend you. Trying to help you to understand that flood that's being cast out of the serpent's mouth is poison. And if you are just the seed of the woman and... You're not one that's been born of the corruptible seed of the serpent, and you're not a child of the devil. Then the Lord preaches his gospel to you through his ministers because you should still be meek. But if you're arrogant and proud, you're already being born of the serpent, of the arrogant serpent Satan. Amen? But there's still hope even for them. There's hope for the vilest. But there's even hope for a Pharisee. For the self-righteous. Amen? Don't ever put yourself on the level of a Pharisee just because you are a sinner. No. 
Pharisees were considered serpents by Jesus because they were children of the serpent. Are you listening? They were the offspring of the serpent, Satan. They were born of the serpent. Not everybody that's a sinner is born of the serpent. They've been bit by the serpent and they've got poison in them called sin and that makes them a sinner. But they're not serpents. Do you understand what Brother Joseph's saying here? There are levels of evil. The Bible calls the depth of Satan the depths of Satan there's depth just like with God there's depths of his love there's depths of his wisdom there's depths of his knowledge depths of the spirit of God just like an ocean you go deeper and deeper and deeper well same thing with Satan there are those that go deeper and deeper and deeper into Satanism and deeper and deeper into worshipping the devil and I guarantee you every single one that worships the beast that worships the image of the beast, that follows the beast, has been born of the serpent. Listen, born again of the serpent, the serpent seed. And there's enmity on this earth right now between those that have been born of the serpent seed and those that have been born of the incorruptible seed. And in the midst of the incorruptible seed and the serpent seed, there is just the sinner that needs the gospel to be preached to them. These people that are of the serpent seed, they are children of the devil. They are dead on the inside and full of dead men's bones. But the biggest thing that sets them apart is they think that they're righteous. The more proud and arrogant and more someone thinks that they're righteous without God's righteous, the more they're being born of the serpent's seed, the lie of Satan. The seed is the word. The seed is the voice. It's the word, right? So you got the word of Jesus Christ. That's the incorruptible seed. Then you have the word or the word of God. That's the incorruptible seed. Then you have the word of Satan, which is the corruptible. This is coming down to two, a war of words, the corruptible versus the incorruptible. That's what it's all coming down. And there's a whole valley full of folks right now that are in the valley of decision, that are in the midst of the war, in the midst of the battle, in the center. And then you got one side, you have light, one side, you have darkness. And then you have the common people on the middle, in the middle that need to hear the truth, but the devil's trying to deceive them to going his way. But there are people already in the ranks of Satan. They're already demon-possessed. They're already uh, born of the serpent seed. They're on the earth. I'm not calling them what some call them. I'm not saying that they are reptilians and all this foolishness. I'm not going there. I'm just telling you, you I don't think they have scales and all that stuff. But I will tell you this. There is a beast-like people on the earth. You know what that means? It means they have no humanity about them. To to wipe off the face of the earth, a million people is nothing for them. To get rid of the population off the earth, they have no conscience. They have no heart. Can you imagine dealing with someone that has absolutely no compassion, no feeling, no empathy, nothing? That's a beast. That's a brute beast. When somebody has no, in fact, when somebody enjoys another person in pain, that's a beast. That's worse than a beast, as far as worse than an animal. When you're feeding off the fear of another person, when you feed off of another person's pain, that's beast. That's beast, people. That's brute beast. Have you ever seen that where someone will actually enjoy seeing someone else writhe in pain? I've actually heard these words. They say that someone screaming in terror and in pain and agony is music to their ears. That's the devil. That's the epitome of Satan. When he hears somebody in screaming out bloody murder because of the pain, because of the just the anguish of their soul, just total pain. 
music to their ears. When you get to that level of Satan, the depths of Satan, where you enjoy the pain of others, that's sado cat, cat what do they call it castism or sadi sadi I don't remember what the word is but anyway the idea is there are people on this earth that are literally of the seed of the serpent and God said I'm going to put enmity there's enmity between the seed of the woman seed of the serpent in the seed of Christ. And the Lord said that the heel of Christ would bruise, be bruised by crushing the head of the serpent. Amen? And without question, Jesus stepped on the devil's head at Calvary. But he's still writhing. He's still flailing along around he's still his energy is still having an effect have you ever seen a serpent squirming on the ground when its head's been crushed it has no direction it's just a destructive force it still has a poisonous uh, it can still bite people it can still you know hurt people but it's not in its own right mind you know, it's a picture of the devil. Destruction. Total destruction. No sense of purpose. Just bent on destruction. Destroy everything in its path. That's the devil. And when someone becomes born of that corruptible seed of serpent, they become the same way. You see police officers today that will kick a, a little grandmother on the ground, punch a, a woman with a gun trying to protect herself in Louisiana, in, in um, New Orleans during the tsunami. This old woman trying to protect herself in her home, and they punched her. They knocked her to the ground. That is not just being infected by the bite of the serpent. These are those that have been being born of the serpent. When you can treat an old lady that way, something's beyond sin. That's, that's the nature of the beast. Violent. Violence. That, that's what, where we're going. The scripture talks about the rod of violence. Wickedness is blooming, blossoming, and the rod of violence is filling the land. Donald Trump holds in his hand the rod of violence. That's what he's going to bring to America, the rod of violence. He's not bringing a rod of correction. He's bringing a rod of violence. Wickedness. 